Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you could join me for this first video in a series on our Valentine Mark VI Canadian built early production by Mini Art. And this is going to be part one, our lower hull build. This video should take us through steps one through 16. Hope you enjoy it. So the first thing we need to do is take a look here at the upper hull, which we found was warped uh, in our uh, inbox kit review video. And if you haven't seen that, you can uh, get that on my channel. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and see if we can straighten this out. As you can see, it has quite uh, some warpage here. Um, just checking it with the ruler, you can see that uh, it is bent. Uh, and I, I don't know if this is uh, from the manufacturing process or storage or, or what, but uh, it is warped in two different directions. So we're going to take and try to straighten that out. If I can't get it straightened out, this could be a short series indeed. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at what we're going to do here. So I've taken and uh, clamped this down to some craft sticks, which I checked to make sure that they were relatively straight. Uh, and I'm hoping that this will hold it all in place. And the next thing we're going to do is take a hair dryer and I'm just going to put it on high and I'm going to use that to heat up the plastic. And hopefully I can get it to return back where it needs to. So what I finally ended up doing in the end is using this clamp and over bending it and heating it up again. And about on my third try, it looks pretty good. So I'll just check it with the ruler real quick. Nice straight edge. And that's something we can live with. All right, so let's get on with the build. Quick look at our instruction sheets here, and we're going to start with step one, which is our driver's area, and then we'll just progress down the page. So the first thing we need to do is cut us off some parts. Now I do use uh, these nice thin sprue cutters, and I do leave these sprue gates a little long. That way we can come back in and get right up next to the edge of the part and trim those off nice and flush make it easier for us sanding them later. And here I am using a 400 grit uh, polishing stick just to sand off uh, whatever's left of the sprue gate and uh, any other little flash or a little mold seam that might be on the part. That way we won't have any fit issues when we go to put it in. Or any kind of uh, visible defects, you know, that might show up through our paint. So now we're just installing these left and right panels here that goes onto the floor of the hull of the vehicle. A little bit of to me extra thin and these parts fit relatively well. No issues there. We just want to make sure that we got all of our contact surfaces, we got them placed uh, exactly where they're supposed to go and they do practically snap into place. Now Mini Art is well known for having highly detailed models. Uh, they tend to, I don't know, you might say over-engineer, <laughs> but uh, the, the parts are really small, really thin, uh, and highly detailed. And this is my first mini art kit, so I am impressed with it so far. Um, here we're just putting the uh, steering laterals in. And the rest of the parts that go into the driver's compartment, uh, we don't have any issues with them. As you can see here, I've assembled the seat and installed it as well. So here we're looking at these uh, center supports for the support rollers. And right at the uh, mold seam line, there's a little bulge on it. And this part really needs to set in nice and flat uh, on the flange that's molded into the side of the hull. So I'm just going to take a flat file here and dress that up. And we'll just go ahead and mount those in place. And run just a little bit of, to me, extra thin right around the joint there between the part and the hole. And here we are attaching the front plate. 
Now these parts on the front and rear of the hull, they are a beveled fit. There's no key or uh, stepped joint, so you do have to pay attention when you're, when you're actually gluing these up so that you match the mating surfaces. And I find it easy to glue just one edge and one side first and then the other. And then we'll come back on the inside here, add some glue. Now our support rollers we're going to leave to the end when we go to put all the road wheels on. So we're just going to set them aside for now. So next up we need to take a look at building up our drive sprockets and final drives. As well as the uh, vertical plate on the rear of the hull. And you can see here that that is also a uh, bevel contact area, I guess is what we'll call it. Uh, but it does fit really good. I'm really surprised. Um, nice engineering there. Now we're going to turn our attention to these eyelets, I guess is what they are. They're, they're an extension of the side hull plates that holds our towing shackles. Now we're not going to put our towing shackles on right now. We'll save them for probably last after we get everything painted up. And I do leave the sprue gate on this part. It gives me something to hold on to and allows me to sand it without dropping it. And once it's dried nice and firm, we'll come back and cut those off and just sand that. And we won't have to worry about it, about losing the part. Next, we have to assemble our final drive and sprocket assemblies, uh, one for each side. And it goes together pretty much as you would expect. Now on these hubs, uh, there is a seam. I'm just going to glue it up right now, then we'll come back and use a little triangular file and clean that seam up. Whatever it is that the, to me, extra thin doesn't melt out for us. Here I've already put the final drive and flange assembly together. And just kind of show you how this goes together. The hub goes in the center of the sprocket and then the cap on the end. I don't think we're going to go ahead and mount the uh, drive sprocket and hub to the final drive yet. Uh, we're going to wait until after we get all the road wheels on and everything and check our alignment. But we will go ahead and uh, mount these final drives in place. Now they do have an alignment pin and then there is that flat edge on the bottom uh, that checks to make sure that the alignment is correct. Can't really get these wrong. And all we got to do is just glue them into place. So now these uh, brackets for our towing shackles, they, uh, they have set up nice and stiff and hard for us so we can go ahead, trim off those extra sprue pieces and just polish that down. Really easy to do and you don't have to worry about losing it. Now for step seven, this is the assembly of our two idlers. So what we have here is a tire and we have the uh, front and rear of the wheel assembly. Now on this particular model, these are the replacement parts, the new parts that are added to the kit off of our J-Sprue. Now they are keyed and you need to make sure that you get these lined up correctly or they won't slide into the tire. The important thing here is to make sure that the rims uh, extend past the tire equally on both sides of the tire. And then we'll just go ahead and use a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin and glue that up. Step eight is our slack adjusters and the mounting brackets uh, that they're affixed to. And I find it easier to actually work backwards in the instructions when it comes to the assembly of these. We're going to assemble the plate uh, to the adjustment um, housing. And then we're going to put that onto the mounting uh, bracket and then put the handle on. The instructions are the exact opposite. They want you to put the handle on to the mounting bracket first and then put the other two pieces on. Uh, so I, working backwards, we don't have to worry about knocking that little bitty plastic handle off. And I may even do it a little bit different on the other side. 
but the handle is really small and really fragile so you need to be careful when you cut it free of the sprue and when you're cleaning it up and that's what it's supposed to look like and we just attach those to the front of the hull make sure everything's glued up nice and firm now we're going to work on our suspension and our road wheels so we have four large road wheels and here same thing as our idlers uh, we want to make sure that the rims protrude the equidistance on both sides front and back now they use the same size tires as the uh, the idlers that we put together previously and they go together the same way now for the smaller road wheels the tire is integrated into the front part of the rim or I should say the wheel uh, and then the back side is keyed and then we just have to assemble that and put a little bit of to me extra thin if I could quit hitting the camera <laughs> I know you've noticed that I'm I apologize for that. So we have eight of these to assemble. Now we're going to take a look at this suspension. We have uh, two of each type. Uh, they're mirror images of one another. And we start by cutting out all the parts that we need and clean those up. The little sprue gates and everything off of them. So the way this thing is supposed to go together, uh, this small little lever looking piece here uh, has a very 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 tiny uh, axle on it and it goes right up inside of the rest of the suspension bracket there and it's supposed to be held together with this little bitty cap that I just dropped if I can find it there it is so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to glue that little bitty cap right there inside on the end of that small axle or spindle and then that's kind of sandwiched in between the two halves of the rest of the suspension there and then of course uh, we got our uh, large suspension spring here and that just goes in kind of kind of like that right there stick that back on keeps falling off there we go that's kind of how this whole thing is supposed to go together as I look at this thing I'm thinking what are the odds of that little cap getting glued on that very small uh, axle piece and not gluing it to the inside of this arm so I think what we're going to do is we're going to attach our road wheels this is just dry fit don't want to glue them on yet and we're going to take a little bit of glue uh, right in the center of that cap. So I'll stick the cap in, hopefully without getting glue on everything. And then I'm just going to slide our paired road wheel arm into the hole and press the cap into place. Gotta stick my road wheel back on. It's it's falling off. Um, so I need to make sure that this is aligned correctly uh, before that glue has a chance to set up. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take a straight edge and just check this and make adjustments as necessary. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because we have three different spindles and two different size road wheels which means those spindles are not all lined up together one's going to sit higher than the other two so we have to use as our frame of reference here the actual diameter of the road wheels so once we get that right where we need it because i am very sure that there is glue <laughs> that has come out around that little bitty cap inside so we're just going to set that aside and let that dry completely and we'll go on to the next set and we'll we'll do that times four and then finish building up these suspension components so that we can move on to attaching them to the hull and that is step 14. so the way this works 
is we have a trunnion housing that attaches to the side of the hull and the suspension components swivel on the bottom bracket on the bottom of the inside of the hull there and then the outer bracket which is attached to the side of the hull and just got to make sure that you get the pins in the holes and there it is and it's supposed to move now what we're going to do eventually is we're going to go and we're going to glue all this up because the track that we're going to be putting on this vehicle is all single link that we have to glue together so it's not a workable track now if you wish to go ahead and put workable track on this vehicle you could do that uh, I just don't find it necessary for me to do it <laughs> uh, mainly because the tracks are as expensive as the model is if you want to replace them and so here we are we've got all of our suspension components uh, attached to the hull and now we can turn our attention to the next step which is uh, assembling the or installing the road wheels I should say step 15 is the installation of our road wheels but we have left our support rollers and our idlers and our drive sprockets off so that we can check the relationship uh, and speaking of relationships, I think it's a good idea if we were to make up some uh, uh, bottom short uh, sections of track here, which I think will be uh, coming in handy when it comes to checking the uh, road wheel alignment and also our uh, support rollers and the drive sprockets as well. And so these are cut from the sprues and you just need, uh, once you trim up the sprue gates, just a couple of passes with your polishing stick and that'll clean that up. That way they'll fit really nice. There's, there's no flash or anything on these. Uh, Mini Art did a really good job, so we don't have to worry about that. So we just polish this up and there's only 220 of them to do, so that takes a little while. So in order to put together our track link sections here, I have put masking tape down on my mat so that I don't glue the uh, uh, track down to the cutting mat. And then uh, also I've taped a uh, really thick ruler which helps with alignment. Uh, also down so that I'm not moving everything around. And then we just got to slide all of our shoes into place. One of the things that I found really useful is to use a straight edge and kind of just hold the items down. If you use your finger, they stick to your finger and every time you move your finger, you jumble them up and, well, you can see where that's going. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, just sliding these into place and holding them down the straight edge, that is the way to go. So what I'm making up here is two sections of track. Now these are the straight portions that uh, are on the very bottom and they travel from the center of the very first road wheel to the center of the very last road wheel that are uh, down next to the ground surface. And we just need to run some to me extra thin along uh, the tops of the tracks here and it would just wick down into the uh, into the seam there and we'll make sure that all the gaps are closed up after we've given the glue about a minute to set up we can just make sure that it's not glued down to the to the tape so now it's time to install some road wheels we're gonna put the small road wheels on first just a little bit of to me extra thin and then we'll just slide the road wheels into place and once we get the four small road wheels on we'll just check our alignment here make sure we're not too terribly <laughs> terribly out of alignment there with so many possibilities of a moving suspension uh, you want to double check make sure that everything is going to fit right and here we're using a, that uh, section of track that we made up 
to help check that. So now for the larger road wheels, there are four of these, two on each side. I'm using the thick Tamiya cement for these, and that's because they have a lot of play in them, and I want that cement to fill those gaps. And we need to make adjustments on these. As you can see, they, they can be quite a bit out of alignment. And now we can attach our idlers. And those are the road wheels that goes up on the very front. Now these are a little bit different. Uh, they do have a cap in the center of the hub right there. And that's what makes them different than the other four large road wheels. And we need to check alignment on that too. For some reason these larger road wheels they don't really self-center themselves. So once we get right where we think we need it, again, we'll take that piece of track that we made up and we'll check our alignment, make sure everything looks good before the glue has a chance to fully set up. Now with that done, we can go ahead and stick on our support rollers and again, I'm using the thick Tamiya cement for that. And I'm thinking it's probably a good idea to check the alignment here on those as well. As you can see here, the center one, I need to pull out just a little bit. And I'll make that adjustment. And now with all of our road wheels aligned, we can move on to fixing uh, the movable suspension into place. So we're going to take a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin and we're just going to apply it to those uh, hinge joints, I guess is what we want to call them there for our trunnion, inner and outer pivot points there. Since we're using a type of track that we have to glue up, there's no sense in leaving that flopping around because that's going to be a problem. So what I've done is I've taped a straight edge down to my cutting mat and then I'm using uh, a thick heavy ruler to press up against uh, the road wheels. That way everything's held into alignment and we're just going to weight this down and let that set up and dry. Now it's time for step 16 and here I'm just marking the ends of the bottom run of track section which we glued up earlier. And I have two sections of eight uh, track links a piece. Now we're going to go ahead and attach those to our long section on both ends here. And we'll glue that down. And we're going to let that dry. And while that's drying, uh, we don't want it to dry completely because we still need to be able to uh, uh, bend it right there at that joint. Uh, we'll make up the... Uh, the end sections that are going to wrap around both the idler on the front and the drive sprocket on the rear of the vehicle. So now we're just going to go ahead and assemble these wraparound sections. And we don't want them to dry completely like I stated before because we need to be able to actually uh, uh, wrap these around those items. So we need to move with a purpose here and get these glued up and attached to the rest of the track section. So we only need to give this a couple of minutes to set up and then we're ready to uh, stick it to the vehicle here. Now my intent is to not glue these tracks onto the vehicle. I think it would be much easier to paint uh, and weather this uh, without these tracks attached so we're going to try to get away from having to cement it to the, uh, to the road wheels. So I'm just lining up those marks that I put on it earlier and we're going to start our bend. Being very careful not to break the tracks in two. Now once we get the first bend I'm going to take a little bit of mask tape here and we're just going to tape it down to the road wheel. very carefully <laughs> uh, 
and now we're going to wrap it right around the drive sprocket making sure that the teeth of the drive sprocket go right where they need to into the little bitty holes there in our track section and we're going to tape the tail end of this down and then we'll just move to the front portion here we will tape it into place and once that's secure we'll just move on around our idler and with that pressed down into place we'll go ahead and secure that with a piece of tape as well now with that one side of track in place we'll just go ahead and weight down the chassis here and let that dry while we work on the other side. Once we've got the other side done, uh, it's time to do the top run. And so this is 40 lengths of track. And I find that on the instructions, they are pretty accurate. Um, all the number of lengths that you need. Uh, I only added one additional link to get my runs. Uh, so uh, you can pretty much stick with uh, what the instruction says and just make a small adjustment there. So we glued this up in the same uh, sequence that we did uh, all the others. And this is the one that I added a link to. <laughs> and I'm, I'm on the wrong side. So I'll just flip this over, put it on the other side, and we're just going to lay it down. And then the next thing to do is I will secure it uh, with some tape. So I kind of want these to be removable. That'll aid us in being able to install the track later after uh, the upper hull is on and we've painted everything. If it all works out correctly. <laughs> so uh, keep your fingers crossed on that. And we've taped up uh, around the idler as well here. So there is a little bit of spring right there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take and just lay something out on top of the track. Kind of weight it down. And we'll be able to let that uh, dry up and get nice and solid for us. And we got one more section of track to do for the opposite side, which we do it exactly the same way. And so that wraps up steps 1 through 16, and lower hull is complete. Now the tracks are not secured to the road wheels or the drive sprocket. Uh, I intend to remove these for painting and weathering, and that will have to be much later. Uh, Next video, uh, we'll be taking a look at and doing our upper hull. We'll see how far along we get with that. So, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching these videos. It's because of you that I keep making these for you to watch. Uh, and if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, think about subscribing. That way you'll be able to follow this series build and many more builds uh, on my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you won't miss uh, another video and with that guys stay safe and I'll see you in the next one